The time has finally arrived. Elementor version 2, the pro version, was just released in beta. And we're going to go over that in this video. It's exciting stuff here. We've got custom headers, footers, post templates, archive templates, a new role manager. We're going to go over all of that in this video. And uh, in advance, let me apologize. I probably sound a little nasally. And that's because I'm actually suffering from a cold. But this just came out. I knew I had to just jump into the studio and make this video. And it's exciting stuff, guys. Guys, I've been using this all day. It is really, really cool. And we're going to go over it in this video. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com, where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button. If you don't want to miss a thing, go ahead and click on the bell, and YouTube will let you know when I have a new video. Also, welcome to the new studio. If you've seen any of my videos, they don't look this good hopefully you think this is good uh, but uh, this is going to be how it's going to be for a while but let's just go ahead and jump into the content now so first of all the first main feature that a lot of people are going to be excited about is custom headers and footers this means you're going to be able to use elementor pro to make headers and footers for your website now if you've been paying attention to all of the things that elementor has been releasing over the past six months this shouldn't be a surprise because they've been adding one by one the modules that are used to make a header so they maybe six months ago released the nav menu navigation module the search module all of these modules now you can use properly in the header and the footer of your website. Next, we've got post templates. This is very exciting. So your blog posts, you can actually create a global template that you can apply to your blog posts to make them look stunning. And this will also work with custom post types. Next, we have archive pages. So now you're gonna also be able to use Elementor Pro to create beautiful archive pages. I actually can't wait for this feature because I need it badly. But we're gonna be able to do this finally using Elementor. Next is dynamic connections. And see, this is the one thing that has been really needed. There was another tool that kind of tried to give post templates and archive templates and things like that, but it didn't have this thing called a dynamic connection right here. And that's because Elementor hadn't created it yet. And now, you're going to get to see what this dynamic connection is. It's connecting custom fields into the various Elementor modules. It's very powerful stuff. Some of the content we're going to go over is going to get a little technical. Uh, don't worry, I will be releasing uh, videos on each of these various future, uh, features so that I could cover them more in detail one by one. Lastly, we got display rules. Now, display rules is when you create that custom header or that footer or that post template, where do you want it displayed on your website? Just on your homepage? On your entire website? Do you have a membership website where maybe there's you want to have a different header for when people are logged in and on those membership pages? You're going to be able to create dynamic websites like that now using Elementor Pro version 2, and that's the display rules. And lastly, but not least, we have a new role manager, and this is essentially going to allow you, if you're in a design agency, you hand the website over to your clients, what you're going to be able to do is give them a little bit of access to make some changes on their own if you want them to. So you can give them access to just changing the text in Elementor or on Elementor created web pages. That's pretty awesome because a big problem is when you hand over the website to your client and they start messing with the style and next thing you know it doesn't look like anything that it did when you gave it to them. But now that problem is solved with this role manager and we're going to take a quick look at that as well. So let's just go ahead and jump on into my Elementor site right here. And so first let's take a look at the role manager. That's easy. Now I have, in order to use Elementor Pro, the beta version for version 2, you have to have the beta version of the normal Elementor plugin installed. So I think it's version 2.03 get all technical and throw some numbers out. This is the first beta for Elementor Pro version 2. Now I will tell you, you don't want to run this on a live website. I've been using it and it's a little buggy and I expect it to be kind of buggy maybe in this video and also for probably a few more weeks, but they're going to work out all those bugs 
for sure. So let's go ahead and jump into the role manager. It's just found underneath Elementor. There's role manager. And what these are is when you want to give your client a WordPress login, you can assign a role to it. And then you could go in here to the role manager and decide what you want to give your client the ability to do. So if you want to create an account and it's say it's the editor access level, you can choose right here to give them no access to the Elementor editor or give them access to content only. So you know when you're in Elementor and you're doing your thing and on the left you've got the Elementor menus, you have content, you have style, you have advanced. Well essentially it's going to get rid of the style, it's going to get rid of the advanced and you're going to just have access to content for them. So that's what that is. Okay, so that's the role manager. It's pretty basic, very simple to implement. Um, you could definitely test it. I probably should show you in this video, but we'll have a dedicated video for that in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my templates now. And now we see a whole bunch of tabs here. And this is because you're gonna over time create so many custom headers and footers and post templates and all these little blocks, all these things you're gonna be creating organization could become a nightmare and here's the solution to it is you could see everything in this list right here or you could just see the specific types of content that you're making and saving to the Elementor library. And what you see that's new here is header, footer, single, and archive. So let's go ahead and click on header. I've already gone ahead and created a header. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor. It's gonna jump me into the Elementor editor. And here is the custom header. Now I didn't sit here and make that. I used a at, uh, Elementor block for headers that they made available and there's two available at the time of recording this but I'm sure more will come available so if I click on add template click on blocks it knows I'm making a header so it's showing me automatically the various header blocks and here they are right here and so I just chose this one and so let's get out of that. And that's all there is to making a header. You could obviously make one yourself, put your own custom background color, your own style to the menu navigation and make it look exactly how you want it to look. But here is what is different. If you go down to where the update button is and you click on the arrow, you have a new option here that says display conditions. This is where you're gonna tell Elementor where you want this header used. Now typically, you're just gonna probably want the header to be on your entire website, but if you wanna create more dynamic websites, you might have something else in mind if you have a membership area or something along those lines. Let's go ahead and take a look at those display conditions. So here they are, you can have includes and excludes. So here's the first one right here. I have it set to show on the entire website. And I can also change this from include to exclude if I want to exclude a couple pieces of content where I don't want to show this header. And that's all there is to it. You add your condition and then you go ahead and click on publish and you now have a new header that is assigned. Now, let me just say, I should have said this earlier, not all themes are going to work. It's just the main themes that have been supporting Elementor, which is Generate Press, Ocean WP, Astra, and I think there might be one or more other themes. It's not going to be all of them. So this is when you have the benefit of working with one of those page builder themes. So that is creating a custom header. A custom footer is going to be exactly the same. So let's go ahead and exit here. Go back to the dashboard. And then let me go back to my template. So that's our header. Next, we'll take a look at single. So this is gonna be like a blog post or a template for blog posts or a template for custom post types that you might have created. I will create a whole video on this if the concept is a little hard to understand. Developers are gonna get it right away, but this is now getting into the territory of some things that can confuse some people because it's a new concept for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on, I've already created one, I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor right here. And so here is a blog post style that it had as a template. So when I go to templates right here, I click add a template, it takes me straight to blocks and it shows me some of these single post templates. So this is, if I chose this one, 
this is what it would look like. If I chose this one, this is what it would look like. And this is the one I actually chose. Now you don't have to use one of these templates. You can create your own from scratch, which is what I'm going to be doing. None of these actually fit what I'm doing, which is totally fine. But that's what I went ahead and chose. And here it is. Now I want to show you that field connection or that dynamic field connection deal that I was talking about earlier. So there is another plugin out there that tried to do custom post templates and custom archive pages. And I did a review on it and some people got really upset at me because I said it's missing this really crucial piece. And some people kind of thought, what, what's this guy talking about? He doesn't know what he's talking about at all. It works perfectly fine. Let me show you that missing piece because Elementor has now created it. So check this out. If I have a heading right here and I drag it and I drop it right there, you're going to notice now in all of the modules, this new little thing here. See, it says dynamic and it has kind of this hamburger looking thing. And when you click on that, it's going to show you some options. And so basically it's saying you, it's saying here's this Elementor module that you want to use in this template. Well, you can dynamically insert information into the content area of that module. This is something that that other plugin did not allow you to do. And it wasn't their fault. There was just no way to do it because it was an add-on for Elementor. It wasn't coming from Elementor themselves. So I can choose right here to put in for the link portion of this, the URL to this post or to the archive page or all of these various options. So that is what you're going to see everywhere. So here for the title, it says it right here as well. So I've got even more options here for the title. I can put the post title if I wanted to. There's all of these pieces of information that I can put here, including custom fields. Okay, so let me go ahead and back out of here because I want to demonstrate that to you right now. Actually, this has the same display options or display conditions right here. So you can choose include all posts. You can do it by category. So you can have different blog post styles for different categories or different tags or unique pieces of content. And if you had custom post types, you would see it here as well in this list. Wow, we're, we're talking about 404 pages. You're making everything here. There's so many options here. It's awesome. Okay, let me go back. I want to show you something really cool because I know this is going to come up. So there are several tools out there for creating custom fields. Certainly the most popular and well-known tool for creating custom fields is advanced custom fields. So I'm happy to report that when you're using Elementor version 2, Pro version 2, advanced custom fields is going to work and I'm going to show you that here in a moment. Now there's also a couple other ones. Toolset, I've tested Toolset it's not working yet. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be coming. They've already said that's coming. And one of the other tools, it actually happens to be the one that I use. A lot of you already know that, that have been following the channel for a while. I use pods and sadly it doesn't support pods. I hope that they will support pods natively. However, I'm going to reach out to someone that I know that can build the integration, the pods, and I'm going to see what it would cost money wise to have it built. I would love to donate money to have that built, but I'll be able to show you right now advanced custom fields. So let's go ahead and jump back in here. Hope you like that little switch thing. I could do a whole lot more with this setup, by the way. I'm just, you know, I'm digging maybe 50% into what I can do with my new setup. Anyways, so here's advanced custom fields. It's a free plugin, but they also have a professional version. I'll go ahead and activate it. You can see I was testing tool set and I was testing pods and also I was testing ultimate add-ons for Elementor. Let me let you know that's coming, but any of these add-on packages, they are not going to work with this dynamic field connection yet. I'm pretty sure there's a way to do it. They just need to update their plugins. I don't know conclusively or not, but I know none of them are working because something specific is going to have to happen to those modules in order for it to work. Okay, so I've already activated advanced custom fields right here. Let me go to posts and let me go into the only post that there is. And you can see here's a field I already created in advanced custom fields called video embed. And uh, I think I, I typed that in, whatever. Okay, so let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go back to Elementor, my templates, and let me go back to the blog template that I created. Let me click on edit with Elementor. 
it's going to pop up and let's just use the heading why not let's just drop that heading in right there and so say i wanted to get rid of this and i wanted to use that advanced custom fields field i'm gonna click on dynamic i'm gonna scroll all the way down and there it is acf field when i click on it it probably actually already knows i only have the one field so there's no other choice uh, but it says acf field and when i click on the little wrench right here oops let me click on the wrench right here i would choose the actual field right here so it's the only field i created called video and so now it's going to take whatever value i have in that custom field it's going to use it right here in the template like that and that's all there is let me go ahead and click on update i actually haven't tested that so the same concept is going to work with archive pages as well you're going to have access to custom fields it's just really amazing what they've done here now i will say that it's it is a little buggy um i've been using it and i'm using it with the theme you can see right here there's like a little uh, spacing there and there's there's little things that need to be tweaked but all in all i've got to say that this is definitely exciting stuff right here that elementor 2 is bringing to the table amazing things that we're going to be able to do i can't wait for the future of elementor now Here's a good time. If you're not subscribed to the channel, it's a good time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then click on the bell because I'm going to be all over this content wise. I'm going to be all over this and I've got a lot of experience with this because I've been using a similar tool on my website in depth. I'm one of the power users with it. And so if you're here on this channel, I'm going to teach you everything that there is to know about creating and strategies as well with creating these custom post templates and using them to create an amazing website for yourself. So I want to hear what you think about this so far with Elementor 2. I know this is exciting, exciting stuff. I want to hear from you down in the comment section down below. If you don't have Elementor Pro, now's a good time to buy it as any. I've got a link in the description or visit wpcrafter.com slash Elementor. I have a special uh, training course that I now need to update for version 2. Uh, but uh, if you did purchase Elementor through that link, I give you access to the training course or the courses available for purchase separately hey thank you for watching this video i hope you like the new style if you have any suggestions i might change out the background or something like that feel free to let me know thanks for all of your support here on the channel thank you for watching thumbs up and i'll see you in the next video